such a productive week in my life. I would start this video off by giving you some context as to what I'm doing, where I'm doing it, why it's different to what I was previously doing, and yeah, really just set the scene so that the week that I'm about to show you makes a little bit more sense. I, so basically, if you didn't watch my beanbag diaries, I have moved into a head of product role at a fintech startup. Now, this fintech has three different products. Two products are in market live with real customers, and there is one new product that we will soon be embarking on building and building a team for. So I really want to bring you all along on the journey of working in a startup, very much operating from the ground up, establishing everything from scratch. And it's quite a different experience to what I've documented in the past, which has mostly been my product experience working at larger tech companies. Now, I want these videos to still be very relatable. And I know a lot of you who watch me are either aspiring product managers or you're in the early stages or even mid stages of your product career, but you're navigating challenges and complexities because let's face it, no product role is ever easy to navigate and no product role, no matter how much experience you have, just automatically gets easy. So I'm really excited to share with you what it's like to be the first product hire in a startup, to set up everything from the ground up for the most part. Uh, I'm also really excited to continue sharing the specific tasks that a product manager needs to do because being a head of product in a very small company means you kind of got to do it all, which to be honest, I, I secretly love. I really thrive on doing lots of different types of things. I really enjoy trying to navigate the strategic stuff, the high level, uh, setting things up, being more across people and team building. But I love jumping into the details of the product. How, what on earth are we actually building? How do we craft the user experience? I'm working really closely with product design on that. Um, you know, working really closely with our technical team and engineers on how things are actually going to work and yeah, really getting into all of those. So just want to let you know that even though I'm moving into this new role, I'm still going to continue to give those of you who need and want to understand a lot of the very specific things that a product manager owns, I'm still going to be giving you that. But that's the context of what's changed for me. So what you're about to see is a four day vlog where I am doing anything and everything. Um, I couldn't quite summarize for you what I focused on because I did a lot. Everything from some customer support for some of our products because we need to think about how we scale customer support. So I'm doing that at the moment uh, alongside someone else to obviously like planning and attending standups to uh, meeting with our investors and, and getting their guidance on how we set up some operational things to meeting with customers or potential customers and doing product demos. I really like covered the whole span of lots of different things um, that yeah, is really part of my role now. Most of the vlog is in this room, but I hope you still enjoy. Uh, I did take you out with me for one day that I went to our co-working space, but, but filming with other people in an office is a little bit tricky, but I did try and capture bits and pieces because we did pretty much like an all day session stuck in a room, product design, engineering, just really trying to scope out the details of the onboarding process for one of our products. So yeah, that's kind of the context I wanted to set. Please let me know if you enjoy this because I would love to do weekly vlogs, just taking you along on the roller coaster ride that is going to be the next year, if not longer than that. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited to share this journey and this experience with you. And I hope you learn as much as I am learning because I'm definitely gonna try and share all of my experiences with you um, as yeah, I navigate the next few months and the rest of this year. Enjoy watching the rest of this video and please subscribe if you are interested in content around product management and startups and working from home and being a female in the tech industry and productivity and all of those things around just like doing it all, balancing side hustles with career and 
all of that kind of stuff is what I'm all about. If you are multi-passionate like me, you should also follow because I love talking about how I balance it all or how I try to balance it all. Enjoy and I will catch you in my next video. Welcome to a few productive and hectic days in my life. Quite honestly, I've been struggling to find the time to film some sit down videos that I have planned for YouTube. So I thought, why don't I just take you along the next few days? Because they are quite, quite hectic and I need to be very productive. So I thought that could be interesting. Uh, I am also transitioning at the moment into uh, new work, new job, um, and I guess the portfolio of things that I do. So I thought that could be really interesting to share with you as well. Uh, I'm learning a lot of new things. I'm setting a lot of stuff up and yeah, really just trying to figure out how to, how to juggle this new set of things that I'm doing in 2024. But as for now, it's Tuesday morning. It's just gone 10 o'clock. Uh, this morning I had one mentoring call and it was with, yeah, the, the sweetest um, person who is looking to transition from communications into product management and we just had a bit of a career chat. And now I spent some time on Slack catching up on all the various things and rescheduling parts of my day. And now I'm gonna go on a walk before the chaos of this afternoon gives me no time to do that. I have been absolutely loving my mentoring sessions lately and I think it's because I finally found a way to set myself up for success with a good routine and a good structure and a system that actually allows me to do the best job I can with these mentoring sessions. So now I've dedicated a few week day mornings, 7 to 8.30 a.m. I will do those sessions, so before work, and I find it to be a really energizing way to start the day when I'm talking to someone who is being super proactive with figuring out their next step in their career or overcoming a challenge that they're having in their current role. And I also have opened up one of my mornings on my weekends because that is the only way at this point in time I can fit everything in and the mentoring sessions is just not something I'm willing to let go. So yeah, really enjoying that. And I'll share more with you soon as to other offerings I might bring out around mentoring. So it's just about to go 11 o'clock. I have a call from 11 to 11.30, then from 11.45 to about 12 o'clock, I'm actually meeting with someone virtually to film a little video that is going to serve as promotion for a panel that I'm speaking on in a couple of weeks or a panel that I'm hosting slash speaking on. And then I have a bit of a break and at one o'clock I am uh, talking to someone who we are potentially going to hire. It's not really an interview because it's like a warm referral. So it's just a bit of a get to know you kind of thing. And then I have to do some prep for a event that we have at 4 p.m. in which I need to speak. So that's the gist of the day. Month. I just wrapped up filming uh, a brief Q&A with Megan who runs a, a meetup that I will be kind of co-hosting. So that was really fun. Um, I am in the spirit at the moment of being really vulnerable and honest because I'm getting such good feedback from you all as to how helpful that is. So I just wanted to share with you that I have the strongest inner critic you could possibly imagine. So I just filmed this Q&A with Megan. It was four questions, really straightforward. And we finished filming and I was immediately overthinking and criticizing how I answered those questions. And I, I love that she called me out on it and she was like, that was great. You're being hard on yourself. It's better to just get this out there than to um, not get it out there. And yeah, it's something I'm actively working on. I think it's actually one of my big focus areas for 2024 is to stop letting the inner critic, that little devil that constantly sits on my shoulder for no reason at all, get to me and really focus on telling myself that I did a fantastic job, that I absolutely should have been the person answering those questions, that people are gonna watch that and get value from it and really just not giving a crap, just not caring and just making the most of opportunities like that, that I, I get. So that's my little pep talk. I've got three minutes until our daily stand up. We do a really quick 15 minute, it's often not even 15 minutes, um, stand up uh, every day. So I'm about to jump into that. And I need to get organized for that so I can kind of share what's been happening in the last couple of days. So 
I'm gonna jump into that and then I'll check in soon. I probably won't really be leaving this room much today. Stay tuned for the rest of this video because I promise I'll be doing some really interesting things uh, later this week. Let's talk about some of the practical and tactical work that is happening at a product and development team level in a startup. So we have all of the common ceremonies you would be familiar with. We do a daily stand-up, which is across the entire company. We do a sprint planning session every two weeks across the entire company. We also do a dedicated development team and scrum or sprint specific planning session every two weeks. Myself and my CTO will do a bit of a pre-planning session before every sprint just to make sure we are aligned on the outcomes and goals of that sprint. And then we also do uh, bi-weekly or fortnightly retros, and eventually we will also do demos. It took us a good while to get into a very good cadence and I guess operating rhythm with a lot of the ceremonies we have. We were a newly formed team. We had never really worked together before. Everyone came from very different backgrounds and different environments. Everyone had different needs and ways of doing things. So I think it's important to listen to everyone's feedback, especially when you are forming. But ultimately, you need to stick to something, give it a go. And if it doesn't work, you pivot later. But you try it enough where you know it's not working so that you have some insights to then feed into whatever it is that you ultimately want to improve. This is how I recoup in between meetings. Um, but I've actually had the last hour and the next hour free, meeting free, which is so nice. Um, one of the things that I got really good at in my last big tech job was organizing my calendar such that I had big chunks of no meeting time. Um, and I think things are just so chaotic in the startup scene that and things are so fast moving especially while you're setting stuff up that it at the moment it's a little bit difficult for me to not have a call with someone or to not answer a, a random huddle that i get on slack because that could be a blocker so i'm just kind of rolling with it at the moment but eventually i do want to set up a system such that i have dedicated chunks of time to actually do focused work so yeah, now I'm going to prep for a AGM that we have at four o'clock. So an AGM is an annual general shareholders meeting, I think it is what it stands for. And it's basically uh, anyone who has raised funding for their business will hold an AGM once a year just to update your shareholders on what is going on with the business. Um, and if you've made any big decisions, you also need to um, inform the shareholders and I guess have them agree, but it, it depends on their shareholding. So we have our AGM today and yeah, I'm just going to be doing a very brief intro to myself, I think, and um, sharing an update on one of uh, our products. So yeah, the slides and everything are already done. I, I think I have two slides that I'm gonna be talking to, so it shouldn't take me too long, but yeah, I'm just gonna prep for that now. And then I have booked a Pilates class for 5.30. Um, which will cost me if I cancel it. Uh, so I'm really glad I passed self booked that in. I'm trying to prepare for my speaking section in the AGM and we have a crazy storm and I am being very disturbed. He's very scared. The storm is crazy. It's actually very, very nice. And um, this weather really helps me focus. It's okay. The thunder is absolutely bad. It's okay. Wrap up the Tuesday vlog here, but I'll continue tomorrow morning. Uh, I had a good afternoon. I attended the AGM. It went well. Uh, we got good feedback. And then I jumped on a really quick phone call with one of our investors to talk through a few things. And we made some hiring decisions. And I have a lot of Slack messages to catch up on tomorrow, but that's okay. Uh, I'm feeling good about tomorrow and Thursday. And actually Friday as well, because I don't have as many meetings jam-packed in so yeah all in all a good day um i really feel like every single day i just get more and more behind and i really feel like this is partly the world of product management but also on top of that the world of startups when are you ever on top of everything you need to do so i really want to start sharing uh a little bit about how i am planning my days how i am prioritizing so let me know if you would be interested in that. 
Um, and I mean how I'm prioritizing my own tasks, by the way, not, um, not like product work. Um, because I really enjoy when I learn about how others are managing their schedules. It's very fascinating to me, especially when someone is juggling lots of different things. So yeah, that's day one of this week. Uh, I have had a few meetings move around. So I had a big pitch on Thursday, which actually has been rescheduled. So this week may not be as exciting, but I will be going into our co-working space. Um, so, uh, you know, you should see, uh, some different scenery rather than me just sitting in this room. So yeah, I will catch up with you all in the morning. There is something so therapeutic about actually just cleaning up your physical space at the end of every day. And this is my reminder to myself to do this on a daily basis. Happy Wednesday. It's about one o'clock and I'm only starting picking up the camera now. And quite honestly, that's because I had a meeting free morning, which I wanted to make the most of. And just to get myself organized, do a few admin things, just catch up because Monday and Tuesday was almost like back to back. And tomorrow I'm going into our co-working space. So it's not like a meeting full day, but just by the nature of being around other people, it's going to be harder to do focused work. And then I'm not sure how Friday is looking as of yet. So yeah, it was kind of my only opportunity this morning. I was supposed to have a customer demo this morning for one of our products, but it actually got canceled, which really felt like a blessing in disguise. So yeah, that's kind of how I've spent the first half of today. Last night I listened to a podcast by a um, founder of a few different startups and I love this episode, so I'll link it here in case you are interested in things that I'm interested in. So if you like my vlogs, you probably will like this podcast. And she talked about how she manages her time as a working mum, but also how she manages her time having lots of balls in the air. And that's, as I've described um, many times, I love having so many things on the go. And I almost can't function if I just have one thing on the go. So yeah, if you have any recommendations for other podcasts, books, blogs, or anything where people kind of talk about time management and how they organize themselves and like their workflow, I am such a geek for that kind of content. So please, please share that with me. So on that note, I'm very much in the process right now of setting up, I guess, the best workflow for myself that I can because I have a lot of balls in the air. Um, I like to typically say I have a lot going on, but like who doesn't? But I intentionally have a lot of balls in the air. And it's not even about being productive. It's just about being organized. It's about knowing the things that, that are highest priority. And that obviously also impacts productivity, but I like to think about it as a system, as a workflow, rather than I need to organize like my to-do list. Um, so I half rearranged my office the other day because I don't know if anyone else feels this. I don't like having my back to the door because I guess it's bad feng shui, but something about it doesn't allow me to focus. I really like having a wall behind, behind me. It's a very strange thing that I cannot explain. But I rearranged it and something about it is still not quite right. I think the desk is in a good, in a good place now, but the rest of the room is just not really pulled together. So I'm gonna to attempt to make a few really small changes now because it's been bothering me and it doesn't look good in the back of videos. It's kind of strange right now because the desk is diagonal, but for some reason I don't want it straight against the wall. And again, I can't explain why, but I feel like this works. And I'm using that as a um, footrest, which is actually very comfortable. So I'm thinking um, it's very cluttered there. So that's part of the problem, but I'm gonna move that plant from there to there. And that'll be really good in video backgrounds. And then it's just very blank and boring there, which I've noticed also looks a bit odd in my calls and in videos. So let me start with that, but I'm really liking having my bean bag here because I like being able to look out and sometimes I will work here, but I also like to have my quiet morning time here. And then obviously there's just crap 
crap everywhere. So let's see. It's a small improvement. And then it looks really empty behind me in this corner. So I might put another plant there, like a less luscious plant or something like that. I really wish I could recall what task I was working on this afternoon, but it was probably a combination of talking to multiple people on Slack and figuring out what needed to happen to unblock different people on the team, what are decisions we need to make immediately, is there new information that has come to light regarding some of the decisions we are currently in the midst of? And yeah, really just getting across and staying across everything that is happening because that's what you need to do when you're in a small team. You might be in a product role, you might be in a marketing role, but reality is you are going to be spread across quite a few different functions. Um, I had a meeting this afternoon moved and I was secretly really happy about that. And yeah, I just felt very in flow, which quite honestly, I have not felt with my actual work, like job wise, for so long. I, I want to say at least 12 months, if not longer, in terms of the last job that I had. So for me, that's a really good sign because I do need to be working on something that I'm very interested in and I'm enjoying and that I see a purpose in, in order to feel in a flow state and to feel focused. So yeah, I just feel, I feel very on top of this Wednesday. Doesn't mean I've got everything done because I certainly don't, but I'm really happy with, I'm, I'm happy with the day. Um, and yeah, it's about 4.45. I'm gonna wrap up work a bit early today because I'm gonna go out for dinner. So yeah, that was today. Tomorrow I'm going to be going into a co-working space. So I promise we will be getting out of this. The schedule for tomorrow is to pretty much spend the day with our CTO and designer to go through the scope of uh, one of our products um, because we are ramping up to start development soon. We're currently still hiring developers, but we have a lot of prep work and design work to get done. So that's the big focus of tomorrow. And I have a call in the morning with my career coach, which I'm very much looking forward to because the last call that I had with her was in December when I was just out of my old job. And so it's, I'm gonna be in such a different mental place when I talk to her tomorrow. So very much looking forward to that. Um, and then in the afternoon, I have a mentoring call and that should be, you know, two calls I can squeeze in amongst everything else. But the big focus of tomorrow is on that scoping. So yeah, I'm gonna enjoy the rest of today. Um, I still need to spend more time on my workflow and my organization system because I really haven't got that down pat, but we're gonna leave that for another day. <laughs> and I will catch you all tomorrow. For as long as I can remember, I have had a side hustle. Probably since about 2013, I have always had something on the side. I've had small breaks in between where I've not had something on the go, but it's always been with the intention to recharge, rest, and get back into something else. It's really a part of my DNA at this point. So I'm really working hard to switch off, be unproductive by design, guilt-free, go interact with human beings, friends and family, because that really does help me get back into a creative flow and a really good creative space when I do spend time on my side projects. Happy Thursday. I'm about to head into the co-working space for the rest of the day. It's about eight o'clock, but yeah, hoping to make really good progress on the thing that we do have planned to do. And yeah, first and foremost, I need to get to this co-working space by 9.30 because I have that career, um, that call with my career coach. And I also need to think about what I want to talk to her about while I make my way over there to make the most of the session. Got essentials include laptop, notebook, and all of my scrappy notes. Charges. Highly recommend this lip gloss. It is probably the only lip gloss I will now ever use in my entire life, the Summer Fridays. Headphones, two different types of headphones. That's it, that's all we really need. Let's go.
Let's talk about the energy of a Friday and the energy and positivity in finishing the week on a high. I think this is so incredibly important, especially if you are building or managing a team to cultivate that culture where regardless of what happened that week, because business is business, bad things are going to happen, challenges are going to come up. But regardless of what happened that week, there is at least one thing positive that you can find that you can let the team walk away with for the weekend because you don't want people to walk away feeling deflated. It's okay to feel deflated, but even if you can find something you learned from a week where you did feel deflated, where you had challenges and things didn't go as you planned or things didn't go as the team was expecting, that learning alone is something that is a positive to take away and is something to reflect on and know that you can learn from that and not make the same mistake the next time you do something. So I'm a big believer in finishing the week on a high, even if it means taking a learning from something that didn't go well. So speaking of Friday energy, on Fridays, I have so much momentum and focus and flow that if I could replicate that to every other day of the week, I can't fathom how much I would get done. And it's not for the reasons you might think. It's not because I'm counting down to the weekend or I live for the weekend because I'm actually the complete opposite of that. My weekends are chill, they're quiet, they're me at home, working away, chipping away on ideas and creative projects. But I think it's the deadlines, it's constraints, it's the pressure. It's knowing that I can kind of set that constraint for myself, which is the end of the week. And that kind of forces me to really get moving on shit. And when I finish stuff, at the end of the week on a Friday, it carries the momentum for me through to a Monday. So that's that's what I wanted to finish on. Uh, if you got this far, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And please let me know what you would like to see. If you enjoyed this, interact with me in the comments and I will see you in my next video. Bye.